A sine wave is generally considered the cleanest type of signal. So if we had a, a sine wave of 1 hertz, it looks something like that. If you look at that on a spectrum analyzer, you would just see one peak where that 1 hertz signal is. Okay. Now, if we added another signal to that that was three times that, so three hertz, we would uh, just draw that in there. Okay, if we add those two together, so we take sort of midway between the two, okay, if I get rid of the original one hertz signal, the fundamental signal, get rid of that, because we, we've added them together now to get this, this black dotted line here, and I take away the, the third harmonic. That's three times the original signal. What we're left with is a signal that's still one hertz, but it's changed shape slightly. Okay? Now, if we added yet another odd harmonic, the fifth harmonic, so five times that fundamental signal, what will happen... This is going to be really rough, but hopefully it can demonstrate the idea. Okay, now if I again add those together, so where we were, plus this green signal now, I'll draw it solid so we know. Okay, it's really, really rough. But what you end up with is that signal is becoming flatter and flatter. Okay, so, so I can see it clearly. As we've added another odd harmonic, what used to be a nice clean sine wave is now looking more like a square wave. And if you kept going and going and added the, the 7th, 9th, 11th and so on harmonic, what would happen is eventually they would get to a flat signal, a, a square wave. So what we can tell by that is that a square wave contains odd harmonics. It's made up of a lot of frequencies. Okay, it's not just one signal. Like a sine wave, if it's one hertz, that's the only signal present, just one hertz. But for a square wave of one hertz, it actually has sine waves of one, three, seven, nine, and so on. That's why when you look at a square wave on a spectrum analyzer, you'll see lots of frequencies. Now, keep that in mind, in conjunction with that, if we go back to a uh, clean signal, which is our sine wave, okay, I'll just draw it a bit smaller. If we have, whether it's audio or RF, doesn't really matter, if we turn the volume up, raise the amplitude, let's say we, we, that's now same frequency, same signal, but just bigger. Okay, that's, that's like turning the power up on an amplifier. Okay, you get more signal. But every amplifier has a limit. Okay, so let's say this amplifier doesn't go any, any louder than that. But we try to turn it up anyway. If we turn it up and want it to be up there, but it can't go any higher, so it reaches a maximum. And then it comes down for the other half of the cycle, reaches the maximum that direction, and it starts again. Okay, if we have a signal like that, that's been overdriven, it's, it's turned up beyond what, what the system can really do, we have a signal that's not clean anymore. As you can see, it's starting to look more like a square wave. What this is called is clipping, okay? It's, it's reached the maximum amplitude we can do, we've tried to overdrive it, and we don't have a clean signal anymore. The effect of that is, in the air or, or wherever it's going through, you won't just have that original signal anymore, in this case the one hertz you'll have components of lots of different frequencies. So basically you're now interfering with other frequencies if it was RF. So that's why you have to keep a clean signal within what the amplifier can do, because if you overdrive it, you'll clip it, become more like a square wave, and it will contain harmonics of other frequencies.